Good morning, you guys. Uh, we are in um, Hanford, California right now, uh, heading westbound on Highway 198. And just getting right across under Highway 43. Uh, we are on our way to uh, La Prino Foods facility, their main one, and uh, on the west side of Lamore. They actually have two facilities here in town, in, uh, in Lamore, but most people don't know about the east one. Uh, yeah, I've, been, I've done several videos of this uh, pickups at this facility before, and time for another one. Uh, this load's going to be going to Toledo, Ohio. Um, I don't get a chance to go in that direction very often, so it wouldn't have been a bad uh, wouldn't have, It would be kind of nice to go all the way out there. However, the load has six days on it of uh, time to work with on it, and I can do it in three days. So I really don't want to be sitting out of this load the entire time. I just got a 34-hour reset in conjunction with my my delivery in Victorville, and I just picked up the load that went to Victorville off the of 34. So I don't need more 34s or, or sitting needlessly waiting for appointment times. But, uh, you know, I actually, uh, uh, for lease ops at JCT, it's, uh, it's actually something kind of new here. They have been starting to give us layover pay. Uh, how much was it? 125 or 150 or something like that a day? I don't remember what the amount was. I want to say it's 125, but I could be wrong. Uh, I can't get moved over. Uh, not without cutting off people. Okay. All right. So to kind of recap the uh, the, the delivery last night, uh, went pretty well there. Um, now I I do want to talk about when you have uh, some uh, there's something that you might observe when you're shut down for your 10 hour breaks if your tractor engine is turned off. And that would be sometimes if your pressure gauges. Uh, if the indicated pressure is dropped below, uh, you know, let's just say down to like 50 or less or something overnight or you know, over the course of your break and they're low by the time you're done. Uh, if you see that, you can, you can bet your bottom dollar you got an air leak somewhere. The question is where? Um, air leaks, if they're not audible, are not really... Uh, are not an out of service concern. There's someone coming on the on ramp there. Um, if they are audible, though, that is an out of service concern. And so I know uh, I've been having, a, you know, just in the recent past, like within the last week or so. Come on, pick it up so I can move back over before these other vehicles decide to try to pass me on the right. Thank you. Um, all right, so while I was in the dock tour there in Victorville, I went ahead, because uh, I actually uh, got out of my truck, I, uh, and I had the engine off, and my reefer unit was finally in uh, off, for, um, off mode, or, well, it was it was still on in it, but it was in start-stop mode, and uh, it was in the off cycle, or stop cycle, whatever. And I was actually able to hear the you hear where the leak was coming from finally. Now I I know there'd been a leak, I've been looking for it, but most of the time I can't find it because they're either my own engine is running, my APU is running, my reefer unit is running, or uh, maybe a next door neighbor's truck or whatever is running, or next door neighbor's uh, reefer unit is running or whatnot, and this was one, uh, yeah, I knew it was the tractor because I was getting the problem even when I was bobbed to. So, if I, if I get those kind of leaks only when the trailer, yeah, I want, only when I have a trailer hooked up that I know it's the trailer that's causing it. Um, if I, if it happens both when I'm bobbed to and with the trailer, then I know it's, uh, it's because the tractor itself. In this particular case, 
I can, you know, when I'm on my steer tire, I can tell that there was some kind of hissing sound down there, so, and I knew it was probably down on the bottom somewhere, uh, whether it was a uh, air reservoir or a transmission area or what. So when I got through checking in at the receiver, uh, you know, after I got through docking in and checking in, whenever I get back to my truck, I decided to climb underneath it and look for the source and I was able to find it. There's a small green um, quarter inch airline that goes to uh, what I guess is the vehicle speed sensor. Um, it's on the back of the transmission. Uh, right there is a quick connect fitting where on that line there where it goes into the now basically into that, that valve there. It's on the back end of the transmission. Uh, that's where I found it leaking from. So now this load here, I'm going to be picking up. I the the natural route would be to take I-15 all the way uh, up to uh, Code Fort, Utah, and then take I-70 across to Denver, and then I-76 up from Denver to uh, Big Springs, Nebraska, and then I-80 across. Or well, yeah, because I. I'm so uh, seldom in Ohio, I actually forget where certain areas are. I think like Toledo is on the, basically the southwestern edge of, uh, of Lake Erie, if I remember correctly. Um, or no, uh, was that Lake Huron or Erie? Yeah, I think it's Erie. I just forget. Yeah, Lake Erie. Something like that. it's uh, all right. Anyway, um, yeah. Alternatively, uh, during the winter time, or when we're when JCT drivers are not allowed to use I-70 in between the Utah line and uh, and Denver, uh, I might usually take I-15 up to the Salt Lake City area, then take 80 across from there. However. With the amount of time I have on this load to work with, plus the air, uh, the air leak, uh, we'll instead opt to take that load across I-40, where we have a lot more trucks available where I could possibly swap, or possibly even drop it into Oklahoma City or some pull pub drop yards, and get something else that can keep me running or something, you know, if all goes well. All right, so I think that covers that. I, I, I promised JM, um, one of the one of the regular viewers here. Um, yeah, he had asked a couple of questions really about JCT, and um, I answered them on a previous video. And he had some follow-up questions that I have yet to answer. So, I'm going to go ahead and cover those here. All right, so for James, first question is, can you use other fuel cards or discount apps at JCT? Now he's talking, uh, I didn't quote him verb verbatim, but he wants to know about like, let's just say mud flap or, or maybe a, your own fuel card like Nastic or something. And the answer to that is yes. You don't have to use the EFS card as a lease op here. If you're a company driver, yes, you do have to use the EFS card and yes, you have to, at all of your fuel and reefer fuel at um, Pilot, Flying J, or Love's locations. Uh, however, lease ops at JCT can uh, get their fuel wherever they want and use it whatever method of payment they want as well. Now, if you do pay with something other than the EFS app, uh, you, are, you will need to um, get a, keep a record of those fuel purchases and then uh, and met them on a monthly basis, send them to, um, I want to say it's our permits person, Angela Mallory. I could be wrong, uh, I don't use an Aztec card or mud flap or whatever, so uh, if you guys are JCT drivers and you have an Aztec or mud flap or something else you use or even pay out of your own pocket, whatever. Um, please let me know uh, if, I, if I'm having, if I'm referring to the wrong person. But I believe that I, I want to say it's the correct person. It's whoever handles the uh, IFTA tax payments, which I want to say is Angela, but I could be wrong. 
Alright, so yes, yes, you can use uh, mud flap or whatever else you want to use. Uh, that, that's what gives you a better deal and uh, better fuel prices, whatever. More advantageous to you, then go for it. They will, uh, they will actually allow you to do that. Okay, next question from JM was about dropping hoods in the Salt Lake City or Las Vegas area. Uh, you said that you live about 160 miles north of Las Vegas, so I assume that to mean somewhere in the Cedar City, Utah area. Um, Alright, so I inquired about this in our Facebook group, and one of our DMs actually gave me an answer to that. Uh, she said that on... Uh, Okay, in Las Vegas, I know we have deliver deliveries we do in Las Vegas, but all of the ones that I know of there are live deliveries, live load, uh, live unloads, whatever. However, uh, one of our DMs did tell me that uh, in answer that post that we do have one, I think one customer in Vegas that we do drop hooks with. Not much there, but you know, if you want to, let's just say. Um, head home from Vegas and you need to get rid of your trailer, uh, that is an option there where you can uh, drop your trailer out with whatever that customer is, I don't know, but there is a customer in that area that I, I guess we can drop trailers at. Uh, we do have a driver in that area, you know, who lives in that in, in the Vegas area, who uh, informed me that they usually, I think they drop their trailer at that customer as well and then just bomb tail home. So that is an option there. Now Salt Lake City area, we I had previously mentioned we don't do a lot there. Um, we, I, I, I know we at least used to do pickups and deliveries at the Americold facility there um, in Clearfield, which is about 30 miles north of Salt Lake City. Uh, I've also done one delivery at a customer right there in Salt Lake City. All right, we're going to get on northbound 41 here, by the way. Um, and then the very first exit is the, on the Highway 41 will be the one we're going to get off at. Okay, so, from my other photo I was told, we do still do some, uh, some pickup and delivery activity up in that area. It's not much. Again, it's, uh, it's kind of like Vegas. There is stuff there, but very little. You, know, you can get there, it's just there's not much to work with, so getting home time reliably, um, you know, as far as, you know, when you want to be home, uh, I would I would plan on being flexible with uh, when you get there, because let's just say if we only have a couple of deliveries per week in Salt Lake City area, I don't know the exact number, but I'm just saying this uh, what if scenario here. Um, and it's good information for anybody in general if you drive for uh, you know, any company. Now, if you are if you live in a particular area, if there isn't much inbound freight into the area you live in, uh, plan on having a harder time getting home when you want to be home. Now, at first, you gotta, there has to be a load available there that you can get on uh, that another driver isn't already assigned to. Um, the other things would be, uh, let's see, you know, yeah, like I said, if there are only two deliveries, for example, in a week, and let's just say one of them's on a Monday and one of them's on a Thursday, and maybe you want home on Wednesday, you know, because you might have a, a medical appointment or something, or who knows, then you're going to either have to get home on Monday or you're going to have to get home a day late. You know, two days early or one day late, you pick your poison, so, um, it's unfortunately, uh, just the nature of the beast with how OTR driving works with home time, it doesn't matter, it's not, it's not just JCT, it's, uh, any company out there, you know, especially, uh, particularly if you're with a company that does mostly all contract freight, like most of uh, any mega company does, or, you know, uh, not even just mega company, but, because, I don't really call JCT a mega company. We got about 700 seated trucks. We are large though. Um, and we do have a small company feel. In fact, one guy who's brand new to our company, uh, 
in our Facebook group was asking questions and realizing just how helpful uh, people in the group are to him. And he's loving it here already just because of how, uh, how helpful people are. Right up here on the left side will be the receiver. Okay, so JM, I hope that answered your question there. Or your questions, I mean. Um, then I, uh, I'm a little bit iffy on. Uh, you got a stop sign there, dude. So I'm not waiting for your ass. If you got a stop sign and you're not stopping, then too bad. All right, so I know you're really interested in coming to JCT, and I hope it does work out for you um, if you do decide to come this way. But caveat emptor, I guess, or whatever. So, um, like I say, it's yeah. I hope it does work out for you. Just uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, let me go ahead and get checked in, and we'll um, head over to. Uh, to the reefer side and get um, set up here. Alright, well guys, we're all set up here. Let me just um, come on, get to the rivet shipper. There we go. Want to yard move it from here to the check in area or where you kind of park when you're checking in. If you've watched my channel uh, a lot, then you know already where to go. Because you've probably uh, you've probably already seen videos of me coming here. Uh, in fact, I was just here not that many uh, weeks ago. I'm gonna make this left turn here. As usual, I see a lot of gardener trucking, uh, uh, gardener trucking trailers over here. I think those are drive-ins. So now I have come here and picked up a load of uh, lactose before, but that was only one time. Almost every other time, aside from that, has been a load of cheese. Either uh, sometimes frozen, sometimes fresh. There is another JCT right here. We'll park next to him, and that's where we'll be uh, parking for a check in. Let's see who we got here. Anybody I know? Someone with a lot of diamonds on their truck, that's for sure. 4437. L4437. Someone's been here a lot longer than I have. Man, they got a lot of years. <laughs> it's, I mean, I've been with JCT for four years myself, and uh, yeah, they. The number of diamonds they have on the side of that. Okay, yeah. Uh, Diamonds on the side of a JCT truck tells you how many years the person has been there. If they, uh, if they elect to have them on their truck at all. Um, and this guy has uh, look like at least yeah pushing two dozen or so diamonds. So I, yeah, they got a good two two decades with JCT alone. All right, guys, we are. Uh, Gonna be preloading. Oh, the trailer's still in the middle of being loaded already, but. Uh, you have five hours and 23 minutes of remaining oh, drive time. Let me change my status. Thank you. Alright, we are gonna yard move drop hook. Alright, so the plan is we're gonna drop this empty uh, over in the back. Come on, bird. Get out of the way, I don't want to run you over. <laughs> Stupid bird, don't you have wings that you can fly with? Alright, right here, this this trailer right here in the first door here um, that I'm passing by now, 
Uh, that's the trailer I'm going to be uh, taking. Uh, they're still loading now though, so she says uh, I can park in front of it, but don't hook up yet. Meanwhile, we're going to, okay, right here, uh, right here on my left, on my right side now is where we checked in for, uh, at the shipping office. Now, it used to be you had to check in at the, uh, yeah, up, up on the top floor of the those stairs that go up uh, up that same building there on the yeah you know, right before I went around the corner there uh, right before I crossed the railroad track. Uh, but yeah, I don't know about a year, to, a couple years ago, somewhere in that ballpark, I guess, maybe over a year, less than two years, something along that line. Um, they moved the office, the shipping office downstairs, so much nicer for anybody who doesn't doesn't want a little exercise or anybody who might have uh, uh, physical uh, disabilities of some sort whatever or not necessarily disabilities but maybe medical issues that preclude you from walking very much or not walking at all All right, we're gonna drop our empty right over here by where this other JCT driver dropped his. We'll come around here. And we'll see if there are any open spots over here. I can see where he dropped his because I know what trailer he brought in here. Might be an opening over here. I don't know. We'll see. I see a lot of shadows, so it's hard to tell. I might. This might be all occupied. No, oh, that's an opening right there. Okay. So we'll put it right here next to this one. That'll be a straight back setup. Okay. Wait till we're about 45 degrees off, and then just gently bring it back. Yeah, almost. Position just right, it just angled wrong, so let's angle back toward the blind side just to here. Alright, looks like we're good there. Now I do have concrete pads here, so reminder, try to make sure you drop it uh, with your landing gear on top of that pad. Like I can see whoever dropped that trailer next to me uh, did not do that. All right, I should be in the right neighborhood there. Let's see if I even know who that is at 44 or 37. I didn't get a good look. I mean, I waved at him and he, he waved back, but didn't really jump out as someone recognizable. Wait on my airbags to drop as well, so. Um, 44, 30. Oh, I've seen that truck before, but I don't know who they are. Okay. Um, Good there. Raise my bags back up. And I'll go park in front of the trailer and door too. Okay, I do have one other thing I want to talk about here while uh, on the way there. And that involves uh, doing your due diligence when maintenance, is, uh, maintenance gets done on your tractor or trailer. Now, take this also from my experience being a mechanic myself on aircraft. Um, even when people try to do a thorough job, sometimes details get missed. So, in other words, if you get work done on your truck, don't trust that the mechanic 
actually did everything they were supposed to do. Um, you, know, you, you can be the best mechanic out there and sometimes uh, maybe you get rushed or it's the end of your shift coming up or someone distracted you or, you know, kind of like what happened with me recently where I almost, um, almost tore up my airlines and glad hand, I mean, I pigtail whatever at the San Bernardino drop yard because I had a distraction, a distraction with another driver talking to me while I was trying to disconnect from my trailer. So I did things out of order. All right, so same thing can happen there. You can be a damn good mechanic and you can be the best one there is, but you get any of these little factors in there, distractions, you know, of other people talking to you, um, you know, uh, just getting complacent because you're tired or it's the end of your shift or anything else or maybe you just have other things on your mind. Any of those things can cause you to miss a detail. Uh, all right, so I got two examples where complacency actually caused some problems. Uh, my good friend Daniel Finney, uh, all right, so he had a uh, problem with an airbag on, I can't remember if it was his tractor or his trailer. But he just got an airbag replaced on one of the, I think it was his tractor. Yeah, it had to been his tractor because two weeks later, uh, he's back in the shop getting that same airbag replaced because whoever the guy was who replaced the airbag did not tighten everything down correctly. case uh, the mechanic put you know who replaced the airbag didn't tighten all the hardware down or something and something ended up coming up with that airbag I don't know the exact detail I don't know if it leaked again or something some other kind of issue with it but it ended up um, it ended up needing to replace the airbag again that was because the mechanic didn't do their job so I mean uh, they did their job but they didn't do it fully and if they didn't do it fully they didn't do their job it just it happens um, Alright, so that's one of those cases don't trust the mechanic uh, that the mechanic did their job. If, uh, if you know that they did some kind of work on a certain part, do your due diligence and actually uh, double check their work that they actually uh, did everything correctly. Make sure all the fittings are hooked up correctly and all that. Um, that you're not, there's no leaks and all that. Um, or and uh, the, the hardware that secures it is all uh, on there correctly. I had another case. Uh, I had my alternator replaced at the dealer in Houston uh, last year. Yeah, about a year ago. Uh, maybe actually a little more than a year ago. More like a year and a half ago. And it turned out the mechanic who did that didn't tighten any of the bolts down. And it turned. I got to where. I mean, just yeah. No, I I missed the detail. Because I, I assumed that they got their job done correctly, but I uh, found out the hard way they didn't when I pre-tripped my truck and I realized that two of the bolts are uh, all, almost all the way out, really loose, and I think it's, it's starting to warm up here, 70 degrees. So. So, and it turned out the other two bolts that hold the alternator onto the block were loose. I mean, they were, they were threaded, but they were not on by very much. So, uh, that was the only thing that kept my alternator even uh, working at all was that I had two bolts there hooked, you know, partially holding it on. And, all right. And I ended up having to tighten the bolts back down all myself because uh, I was already off the property and in a different city by the time I figured this out. Again, due to my due diligence, I should have double checked the work to make sure it was done correctly, but I was just kind of hurry up and get off the property and get uh, 
get moving in my next load mode. Um, like I say, we're all human. It happens. I uh, also had another uh, situation with this trailer that I just dropped back there behind here. Um, um, that one, uh, yeah, uh, you guys might know from a previous video, I picked my sons up in Oklahoma and Sayre and brought them back to California with me. And Okay, well, on the way home, uh, we ended up stopping for the night in Holbrook, Arizona. I ended up getting a motel room there. Uh, but we get through, you know, when we get parked, I start doing a post trip inspection, and my boys are walking around the truck with me doing stuff. And I get over the right rear corner, uh, right, uh, right side of my trailer, the tandems area, and I didn't notice anything wrong there, but I knew there was some kind of issue with the trailer losing air. I just didn't know where. Um, if over, if it's enough time, the airbags deflate, but there's no, there were no audible leaks on any airbags, and uh, the leveling valve wasn't venting the air, so or didn't seem to be. So, um, or actually, I think it was when the brakes were set, but uh, the airbags weren't deflating until um, a decent amount of time afterwards. So. It didn't seem to be an airbag issue, or if it was, it, it wasn't really co consistent with how, you know, how quickly it would get to where I needed to put more air in the trailer. Um, it turned out, uh, you know, while we're doing this walk around, uh, my older boy Christian, um, he he tells me that he uh, there was a leak there. And I'm like, well, I don't even hear anything because um, all I hear is my reefer unit and I'm in the wrong position because I'm out in front of the tire. And I tend to look for, um, step out of like a few feet away from the tires so I can actually look at the lug, you know, uh, the wheel, uh, the lug nuts and you know, on the uh, hub oil seals and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I tend to get a better perspective view by yeah, going a little further out and if anything looks questionable I, I look closer in but now I couldn't hear the leak at all but apparently he could and it turned out that uh, yes yeah, so I told him uh, I ended up putting my head in closer to the wheel and then I could finally hear it uh, how he could hear it and I couldn't I don't know but uh, it wasn't that I wasn't listening for leaks I just couldn't hear it uh, as well as he could or he was in a better position than I was so I had him uh, go ahead and uh, go back up to the truck and get my There's an old bottle of Febreze here, but it's not Febreze. It's uh, Soapy water. I've already used up all this Febreze that was in and I just re repurposed the container here for uh... Oh, that's fun uh, he's trying to get out of that spot while the other JCT driver is there. <laughs> he's going to have a fun time. All right, anyway, I use this specifically for looking for leaks on uh, you know, airlines or whatever. If I, if I have reason to believe there's a problem, I just spray it on you know, fittings and hoses and whatever. And hopefully I'll find something. Uh, again, if it's not audible, it's not enough to uh, necessitate uh, action, but... Now, if I do find a leaking, though, maybe it could be, uh, just like I said, a loose fitting that I can tighten myself or something. And in this particular case, uh, this was an auto inflate hose where it hooks up to the hub. Uh, the, the fitting there was leaking pretty good. Um, not, so, not so good that I could hear it very easily, but, you know, if I'm in the right position and don't have uh, other noises uh, drowning it out, I could have heard it. Uh, but anyway, um, I have a pair of channel locks that I use to try to tighten it, but my channel locks, for some reason, because uh, there's basically like a, um, I guess I would call it a, a studded bolt that goes through the two, the two parts of it, and then there's a nut that screws it, that uh, threads on on the other side to keep the two halves of the channel locks together uh, don't know what happened to the nut but the, I found the stud and then the two parts of the channel locks were separate and uh, yeah I, I got them and found the stud and yeah I was able to hold it together 
as much as I could, but not enough where I could tighten it all the way down where you know, I could stop the leak completely. I made the leak situation better, just not enough to completely get rid of it. So, um, again, any, any kind of work gets done. Uh, how did that get like that? Probably because the brakes got replaced recently. Um, not super recent, but not not very long ago, uh, several of the brakes were replaced, and I think the tires might have gotten replaced as well. Probably got done when it, uh, if I had to guess, it probably got done when the DOT inspection got updated in February. Uh, now, I think that was done at our yard, so probably whoever did the DOT on it in February more than likely changed the brakes and tires, and when they did that, did not do a thorough enough job of hooking the airlines back up. So here's a number. Here's a, a simple rule here, when it comes to hooking up airlines. If you have a, any kind of a pressurized line, yeah, particularly an airline, uh, when you go to hook up the the connections there, the fittings, use Teflon. Uh, the Teflon helps prevent uh, the the air or whatever from leaking out of the leaking through the threads, and using Teflon could have helped prevent this and. Yeah, also uh, tightening it down more, and then doing a, a precursory leak check at the uh, after your, at uh, at the end of your work. That's customary work. One in my line, of, uh, what I did, uh, aircraft maintenance. You had to actually write it up. If you had a, uh, I mean, uh, aircraft forms and uh, um, yeah, the electronic system, the computer system. Uh, if we disconnected lines, we had to write them up, and then we also had to have another write-up in there for a leak check required, uh, a, leak, a leak check and an operational check on whatever that system was that was compromised. And so, but leak checks often don't get done by mechanics on trucks and trailers, and yeah, you, know, you got to follow up behind them, and if you don't want to have these kind of problems or putting you out of service or whatever, Follow up on it before you even get out of the repair bay. Take one of these uh, water, uh, water, uh, soapy water bottles, whatever, and spray down whatever it was they did, and then actually visually inspect, make sure um, any uh, any hardware that was supposed to be tightened is actually tightened, and double check before you even pull out of the bay. All right, um, I don't want to have this video too uh, excessively long, so and I think this was already plenty to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this one and, uh, you know, when it's time to hook up uh, and get out of here, we'll press on with some more with this video, okay? Alright guys, we're all done here, sort of, uh, at least done enough where I can hook up to my trailer and pull forward and wait. contact there. Ah, right, we'll get hooked up and pull forward. There's gonna be enough room to get my right door closed. I can try. But I might have to. Uh, I normally we pull away from the door and uh, park over here, but where this guy is at. Uh, so I get it shut there. Also, you need to put load locks in. At least one, if not two. They won't seal you up if you don't.
not enough room for me to get the right side door shut, but it looks like the guy's over there. I assume he's the one. Uh, yeah, it looks like he is checking the trailer. Uh, I gotta get the. I gotta get further away from the. It's it's too close to the wall. close now. Okay, so my 14 hour clock is going to run down. It's already below my 11, but I want, I'm not planning on going past my house again this shift anyway, so. And it'll, it'll take about four hours to get home. Not ballpark, and I got 512 right now, so. Uh, I don't even care if it's in driver on duty uh, yard move status, because either way, I can't use my whole drive clock anyway. Out, scale out, and hit the road. So, uh, the milk trucks I know uh, sometimes they, they line up right here where this guy is sometimes, but uh, I don't know why this guy's sitting here. There's a uh, there are two skills over here. I don't. I'm, maybe he's just taking a break or something. I don't know. No, he's not even in the truck. Doing something else. Okay. Now they do. I, I can do. Uh, scale my. Uh, check my axle weights as I go across. And I'll know how good I am at, you know, if I even need to really skill it right away. Alright, 11, 580. Right neighborhood that I like to see it in, mid 11s. Forty-four, four hundred. Uh, it's just a little bit less, and uh, I think it's thirty-three thousand pounds. So we're good there. Yeah, our weights are good. Got okay, seventy-six. Seventy-six something, five sixty-ish. I, I guess I'll call it. I don't know. Somewhere in that ballpark. Either way, it's only thirty-two thousand pounds. Not a concern at all on any of the axles. So I'll get checked out and uh, get out of here. All right, let's uh, get off the scale and out of the way so that guy can check out. And we'll hand jam our. Info. Uh, I'm gonna. I don't see a lot of space over here to park, so just come over here real, uh, just briefly. Have my four ways on. At least I'm out of the way where 
other people can go by. Alright guys, I got departure call sent, but I still need to send a loaded call. I will go ahead and do that after I double check the weight. Did see him coming out. I was starting to pull forward and then he came from behind me and yeah, from the other side though. As usual, it's a heavy load, uh, 43,109. 43, and gross weight a little bit below 77,000. Um, thing on the, uh, the scale ticket thing they gave me, it doesn't really show axle weights per se, but it does show one that says 34,600. Um, but what I saw on the scale, where well, I was going across the plates there, uh, looked like all my weights should be fine. But I will go ahead and double check it. I'll stop in Tolera at the Flying J and get a scale ticket, especially given the fact that I might end up having to, might end up, hopefully, if all goes well, I'll uh, drop it or swap it somewhere anyway. Well, right, you don't want to wait for me. Go. Pothole there. Alright, so yeah, I'm gonna be real tight on the time getting back to Cal uh, back to Victorville. But yeah, I'll be doing a 10 uh, ten hour break at home in Victorville. And then run again um, sometime late tonight, probably midnight ish, whenever get rolling again get moving down the road and if all goes well I get to our terminal in two shifts two very long shifts but I can do it tentatively that is my plan so and then hopefully I can drop it at our, at our terminal and, and simultaneously get my that air uh, that air leak on my tractor checked out or, or I, I, might be, I don't know, I might be able to get a quick connect fitting somewhere. I, I think that's all it is, just a quick connect fitting. Should be able to just buy a new fitting for it. And climb back underneath there and swap it out. Again, use Teflon. And if someone doesn't use Teflon, then you call them on it. Like, why are you not putting Teflon on that, th on that pressurized threaded line there when you're supposed to be? Okay, we're going to head on uh, 198 eastbound, and I will end the video up here. Just so you guys kind of have an idea of how the interchange looks. If you haven't already seen from previous videos of me picking up here. A little bit on a goofy side. Swing extra wide here. My, my, it won't be any issue in any way, but I uh, want to make sure the tandems also don't have a problem across the lane here with that sign. Alright, yeah. Yeah, now all those four wheelers are staying on 43. Okay. Or, 41, I mean. Alright, so plan of action here is 198 east to uh, 99 south and 58 east from Bakersfield over to, well, if I was not, if I didn't live in Victorville, I'd be going to Barstow uh, and get on I-15 northbound and then go across I-40 from there. But being that I live in Victorville, I'll be uh, I'll just take Highway 58 over to uh, Kramer Junction, which is where 395 is, US 395, and I take 395 south to the Atlanto and Victorville area and work my way home from there. Alright, um, that said, 
Uh, there was plenty of uh, information to digest in this video, um, in this one, and I don't want it to be excessively long for you guys. So, um, you guys got the real gist of what was going on here, anyway. So, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one a day. Uh, yeah, I don't know where my next, where I'll be next for uh, as far as what YouTube video will be up for you guys. Uh, hopefully not Toledo. If you uh, if I end up delivering in Toledo, then uh, yeah, it didn't work out in my favor. As much as I don't mind going out that way, it's just yeah, I, I don't want to sit for three days under two or three days under alone. So. Uh, let's not do that, especially after I just did a 34. All right. Well, you all have a great day. And uh, I will see you all in the next one, right? Whether it be uh, in Sepulpa or who knows, whatever else. somewhere, Hopefully somewhere else, though. But, uh, you'll, yeah, I'll just surprise you when it happens, all right? You all have a great day, and we'll see you on the next one.